Marcel Pala, tell us a few words about Pensions Europe. Pensions Europe is a European level trade association for funded pensions. We represent more than 90 million people through our members and we represent funded pensions, both occupational or workplace as they're called, and also personal pensions. And our role as a European level trade association is to represent the interests of our members towards the European institutions, European Commission, European Parliament, European supervisory authorities to, to lobby for good regulation, good policies that lead to good outcomes. Our mission is that people in Europe will have good pensions and it comes in different forms, in different ways, in different countries. Europe is very diverse, there's no one size fit all pensions in Europe. So that's very interesting. So why should a citizen entrust his future pension to a professional fund? And how confident can he feel? In some countries, most of the pension income comes from social security, from the taxpayer. But increasingly, people rely on saving for their, their own pension, either collectively or by themselves. And in many cases, this can be the biggest part of their savings. And it's a long-term savings project that needs to be sound with good outcomes. And investing and saving uh, for a long term with good results is difficult. And professional investors, like pension funds, uh, have a better opportunity to reaching good outcomes for people than most people by themselves. True. What percentage of the total pension market has the occupational fund institution captured at the moment? That is a difficult question to answer. In some countries, uh, almost everybody is covered and, and the pension funds um, are very big also in relation to, to the national uh, product. But in some other countries, pensions, pension funds are small and most people are not covered. The main question, the main problem across Europe is the lack of coverage of funded pensions because it is clear that with the demographic aging of pe populations in Europe, people need to have increasingly their own pension savings or pension savings one way or the other. And that's, that's the coverage, increasing the coverage of funded pensions, whether it's occupational pensions or whether it's personal pensions, it's crucial. True. What is your opinion about pan-European personal pension products? We think that pan-European personal pensions can be uh, important, for, especially for mobile workers or people who are not covered otherwise by occupational pensions, like self-employed or with the new changing mm -hmm. labour market, you have gig economy, platform-based work. There are many instances where people do not have access to occupational pensions. And if a pan-European pension product offers better opportunities for people and also better opportunities for mobile people, then it is a good solution. This product is now um, alive, you are able to provide it, but at the moment there are no pan-European personal pension providers. We hope that the regulation and the limits in, which are in the construction of the pan-European personal pension, that they don't in the end limit this product to, to be successful. Great. So how far the institution of uh, occupational funds has penetrated the European population and which countries are ahead, which ones are left behind? Ahead are countries which have either a mandatory system or they have a quasi-mandatory system based on, for example, or especially based on collective agreements. And uh, the biggest pension fund country in Europe is the Netherlands, where you have more than 90% people of the people covered, and it's very much due to these collective agreements that cover workers in different sectors. But then um, you have countries where the coverage rates are, are below 10% or, or very minimal, and, and there you may have various reasons, uh, uh, historic reasons that you don't have pension funds or you have reasons that you don't have the same uh, social uh, structures, the civil society that supports collective bargaining and then you have to find other solutions than collective agreements to enhance the, the coverage of occupational or personal pensions. And there we have good examples from some countries like United Kingdom where you have a system called auto-enrollment 
so everybody is enrolled into an occupational pension. You, you can leave then if you don't want to stay, but you are automatically enrolled and if you leave you will be enrolled again. So it's something between mandatory and voluntary, uh, but it has increased the coverage of occupational pensions in the UK and some other countries as well. And in Europe, uh, we are looking into this, whether this could be a policy option in those countries uh, who don't have enough coverage at the moment. Great. What is your view about the respective Greek market? The Greek pension systems and, and Greek market, of course, has been turbulent during the last decades that many, many changes have taken place and uh, the pension funds are here uh, not very numerous and not very big, but, but the development seems to be very good. Uh, they're well governed, uh, good pension funds, and hopefully there will be good success for them and, and people trust them and there is good growth for them. At the moment, of course, uh, they are very small in in relation to the to the size of the Greek economy, but it's a good start. Great. Why did you choose Greece for the General Assembly of your organization? We hope the hospitality we provided was worthy of senior use. We were very happy to have the Greek pension funds join us uh, only a bit more than two years ago, and we they were kind enough to invite us to have our General Assembly here in Athens and also engage in this local discussion about Greek pensions and the role of Greek pension funds in an excellent conference that they held yesterday. So it was a good opportunity for us to see what's happening and to participate. And then, of course, we have enjoyed the great hospitality of our Greek member here in Athens. Great. So is there anything you'd like to add for Pensions Europe? I mean, Pensions Europe uh, represents 25 national pension fund associations across Europe, but we are missing many countries. We have uh, 18 European Union countries, we have also uh, Norway and, and Iceland and, and, uh, and Switzerland, and of course, importantly, still United Kingdom. Uh, but we are missing many countries in Central Eastern Europe, and, and we we'll look forward to uh, having better contacts and, and hopefully uh, also members from, from this region, Central Eastern Europe, and, and to be able to, to improve and, and promote funded pensions, both occupational as well as personal pensions, for the benefit of people in this region. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.